Welcome back to part two of the lesson on solving trig equations with half angle and multiple angles using substitution. In part one, we were able to perform U substitution for the half or multiple angle. In this lesson, we will have to perform trig substitution. Let's take a look at our first example. We want to solve the equation cosine two x minus cosine x equals zero on the interval from zero to two pi where the interval is closed on zero and open on two pi. Because our trig equation has a single angle as well as a double angle, we'll have to perform a trig substitution for cosine two x. And notice how we have three options for a substitution for cosine two x. However, it's preferred to have a trig equation in terms of one trig function, and therefore, we will use a double angle identity, cosine two a equals two cosine squared a minus one, to perform a substitution for cosine two x. We can replace cosine two x with two cosine squared x minus one, and then we still have minus cosine x equals zero. And now let's change the order of these two terms here and write the equation as two cosine squared x minus cosine x minus one equals zero. And notice the left side of the equation is in the form of a quadratic. It's in the same form as two x squared minus x minus one equals zero. So let's go ahead and factor this in terms of x and then we'll factor it in terms of cosine. Factoring the quadratic, we will have two binomial factors. The first terms are the factors of two x squared, which are two x and x. The second terms must come from the factors of negative one, so that the sum of the inner and outer products is equal to negative x, or if we want, negative one x. And notice we put minus one with the x and plus one with the two x. The outer product is negative two x. The inner product is one x, and negative two x plus one x is negative one x or negative x, which is the middle term. So using this idea, we can factor the trig equation as the quantity two cosine x plus one times the quantity cosine x minus one equals zero. From here, the product on the left is equal to zero when two cosine x plus one is equal to zero or when cosine x minus one is equal to zero. Solving for cosine x here, we subtract one and divide by two, which gives us cosine x equals negative one half. Solving for cosine x here, we add one to both sides, which gives us cosine x equals one. And now we need to find the angles where cosine x is equal to negative one half over the interval from zero to two pi, as well as where cosine x is equal to one. Ignoring the sign for a moment, having a cosine function value of one half should remind us of a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle shown here, where notice how the cosine of 60 degrees, or pi over three radians, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which gives us a positive one half. And since cosine theta is equal to x over r on the coordinate plane, and x is negative in the second and third quadrants, if we sketch a reference angle of 60 degrees or pi over three radians in the second and third quadrants, we can determine the angles over the interval from zero to two pi that have a cosine function value of negative one half. So let's go ahead and sketch a reference angle of 60 degrees in these two quadrants. And let's also sketch the reference triangles. And now the angles we are looking for over the interval from zero to two pi would be this angle in the second quadrant, which is 120 degrees, or in radians, this would be two pi over three radians, or two thirds pi radians. And the second angle in the third quadrant would be 180 plus 60, or 240 degrees. 240 degrees is equal to four pi divided by three radians. So two of our solutions are x equals 
2 thirds pi radians or 2 pi over 3 radians as well as 4 thirds pi radians or 4 pi over 3 radians. Now we also need to figure out where cosine x is equal to 1. Remember on the unit circle, cosine theta is equal to x. Notice x is equal to 1 at this point on the unit circle where the angle would be 0 radians or 2 pi radians. And because our interval is closed on 0 radians and open on 2 pi, the solution is x equals 0 radians. So we have three solutions to the equation over the given interval. x is equal to 0 or 2 thirds pi radians or 4 thirds pi radians. And before we go, let's verify this graphically. To verify it graphically in blue, we have the graph of the left side of the equation, which is y equals cosine 2x minus cosine x, and then we have y equals zero graphed in red. And notice how there are three points of intersection. Verifying, we do have three solutions over the given interval, zero radians, two pi over three radians, and four pi over three radians. Let's take a look at a second example. Here we want to solve sine x minus sine 2x equals zero over the same interval. Again, because we have a single angle and a double angle, we'll perform a substitution for sine 2x using the identity shown here. Performing the substitution gives us sine x minus 2 sine x cosine x. And this is still equal to zero. Notice how we do have two trig functions in the equation, but both terms do have a common factor of sine x. So now we'll factor out sine x, leaving us with one minus two cosine x, and this product is equal to zero. And therefore the left side is equal to zero, where sine x equals zero, or where one minus two cosine x is equal to zero. So now we need to determine where sine x is equal to zero. So this equation is already solved for sine x. Now we need to solve this equation for cosine x. So we would subtract one on both sides and then divide by negative two, which gives us cosine x equals positive one half. On the unit circle, sine theta is equal to y, and y is equal to zero at two points on the unit circle, here at one comma zero, and here at negative one comma zero. So one angle would be zero radians, and the other angle would be pi radians. So we have x equals zero radians, and x equals pi radians. And now we need to figure out where cosine x is equal to one half, again, on the given interval. Having a cosine function value of one half should remind us of a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle. Notice the cosine of 60 degrees, or pi by three radians, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is one half. And since cosine theta is equal to x divided by r on the unit circle, and x is positive in the first and fourth quadrants, we'll now sketch a 60 degree reference angle in both the first and fourth quadrants. And we'll also sketch the corresponding reference triangles. So the angle in the first quadrant that has a cosine function value of one half is 60 degrees, or pi over three radians. And the angle in the fourth quadrant we are looking for is 300 degrees, and 300 degrees is equal to five pi divided by three radians. which means we have four solutions to the equation over the given interval. In order from least to greatest, we have x equals zero, pi over three, pi, and five pi over three. And again, before we go, let's verify the results graphically. In blue, we have the graph of y equals sine x minus sine two x. In red, we have the graph of y equals zero. And notice over the interval from zero to two pi, Close on zero and open on two pi, we have four points of intersection, one, two, three, and four, 
where the angles are 0 radians, pi over 3 radians, pi radians, as well as 5 pi over 3 radians. I hope you found this helpful.